Hey everybody, welcome into Market Takes. I am your host, Dion Rabowen. Thank you for being with us right here on YouTube. We are discussing, diving in, breaking down, opening up, doing all things on the CPI, Consumer Price Index, uh, the inflation report that just dropped this morning. Markets have already reacted, have been reacting. We've got the market just opening up right now. We're going to talk to you all about that and all about why we are seeing this exuberance from the market. I don't want to say whether it's rational or irrational, but certainly some exuberance from the market right now. Futures showing the NASDAQ just jumping off the boards, out the gym, all that. So we're going to break down what we saw in this report and why we're seeing that reaction. So like I said, we're going to talk all things the report. Of course, I'm going to give you the numbers, the headline numbers, the core numbers, some of those numbers within the report that really move the market and why they matter. We're also going to talk about how this report compared to expectations as well as what some of the most important pieces are and maybe some of the most important pieces that aren't really catching those headlines or drawing those headlines right now whether you're watching on Twitter or reading on some of your favorite websites of course like WSJ.com. We're going to get into the market reaction across markets talking not just stocks but bonds, crypto, commodities, FX, all that stuff and most importantly, we're going to be talking about what this means and what this means moving forward. So not just for today as we're looking out towards that December Federal Reserve meeting and as we look out into 2023, really what you can expect from this move and what this means big picture. So let's dive all the way into it right now. Uh, the October CPI report that just came out today showed inflation rising 7.7% year over year. That is well below expectations. Expectations were for 7.9%. Economists predicting that we finally get below that 8% number. This was the lowest inflation reading year over year wise that we've had since January. So the second lowest reading of the year. And as you remember, inflation was just kind of spiking up. In fact, we're going to throw a chart up here on the screen to kind of illustrate what we have seen from inflation. So as you look at that chart right there, you see inflation picking up, picking up, picking up. And then we have that 9.1% number. That's when markets really freaked out. And ever since then, you've seen this consistent slowdown, right? You saw 9.1, then 8.5, then 8.3, 8.2. Now we are down below 8%. Again, as you look there, the reading we got for October, which was last month, was the lowest we had seen since January, since the very beginning of the year, when that pickup theme really started. So just wanted to put that on the screen to illustrate what we have seen kind of long term coming into this report and why that trend down has markets so excited. That's what it's all about. It's all about the trend. One report a theme does not make, one reporting market does not set, but what we are seeing is a consistent trend of inflation cooling down and moving back towards the Federal Reserve's target of 2%. Um, look, core CPI, that's another number that had really been watched. That was at 6.3% or 0.3% on the month. Uh, both the headline numbers in terms of month over month and year over year were below expectations. That core number came in below expectations. Core matters because it's what the Fed focus on, focuses on and it strips out things like food and energy which can move around a lot, which have been big pieces of this overall inflation story. So when you strip those out, the overall inflation story is improving, things are getting better, inflation is coming down, but also on that core number, housing being the biggest piece of that, you're seeing a cool down. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. So this was lower than expected. Expectations were for 7.9% uh, last month, as I said. That was what economists were predicting. That would have been the lowest level since January. This one, even lower than that, 7.7%. Um, and the 0.4% month over month number, that was also lower than expected. And you also had a revision of September's number revised down to 0.4% from 0.6%. So again, consistently declining numbers on that CPI report, that's what matters. We're seeing a consistent trend down for inflation. That means that the Fed maybe can chill out a little bit, that there's less resistance, that consumers are maybe gonna be hurt a little bit less. All those things are good for markets, good for stocks, and that's why we're seeing this kind of outsized response uh, in the stock market especially. As we remember, we've seen, we had seen that <clears throat> core number month over month pick up. It was expected to rise to 0.6%, which would have been the third consecutive increase in the core number. Instead, we saw a cooler, a lower core number, and the number for September be revised lower. Those are all good things. 
Um, we remember the core CPI number last month was the highest since 1979. So getting back down from that, seeing a, a consistent cool down of inflation is definitely a good thing for investors. And that's important because CPI core sets inflation expectations and expectations are very important for driving the actual pace of inflation. Now, the one yeah but, and this is one thing I wanna highlight here because you're not gonna hear a lot of yeah but from your favorite people on TV. Yeah but, I wanna read you something from the report real quick here. The index for shelter contributed over half of the monthly all items increase with the indexes for gasoline uh, and food also increasing. So we're still seeing increases for housing, we're still seeing increases for food, and we saw a pickup in gasoline again after a consistent decline for most of the past three months that has been holding down the index. That's definitely something to watch for if we get, again, a pickup in those gas prices. That could start to you know, undo some of this goodwill that we've seen from the market. So. Let's talk about some of the most important numbers in this report. What moved the index was, uh, in, I'll quote you again from the CPI report itself, indexes which declined were used cars and trucks, medical care, apparel, and airline, and airline fares, excuse me. Those all were negative, they all declined. So you saw a month over month decrease in all of those, used cars and trucks, medical care, apparel, airline fares. You also saw utilities, you know, that's what we're paying every month. That was down 4.6% month over month. That was the biggest decline in overall the index. So again, these are bills that you've gotta pay every month. That decline in utilities, that certainly had a large impact on the overall index and this slowdown. That may be temporary. We are seeing expectations for colder weather through the winter and as we move into those colder months, if we see that materialize, those utility costs could start to rise back up. So again, that's something to definitely keep your eye on. Watch those natural gas prices, those fuel prices, uh, those things that contribute to what we're paying each month on our utility bills because the big decrease there is a big part of why we saw this index move lower, the overall CPI index. Food rose 0.6%, moving further away from that 1% month over month increase that we have seen really going back to June. You had seen food prices rising kind of steadily at 1%, a little bit over or a little bit under, and then you got that 0.8% reading a month ago, now down to 0.6%. So again, food prices, not that, they're, not that they're declining, we're not seeing decreased food prices, but we are seeing a slower pace of increase. Uh, that's big, and you also saw a 19.8, almost a 20% increase in fuel oil. Watch out for that. Watch out for those gas prices because that could be picking back up. And again, that doesn't just contribute to one piece of the index. The index is, is measuring it one way, but fuel contributes to everything because gas prices are on delivery. It's most everything that comes to you gets delivered to the stores, to your house, to wherever it goes, buy something that uses fuel. And if those fuel prices start to pick back up consistently, we could see this progress that we've seen reverse. So watch out for fuel prices uh, as you're looking out at the future of this index. The other piece I wanna talk about is housing inflation. In the last few months, we've seen housing inflation driving up the overall index. This month, we saw housing inflation kind of cool down, but one thing I wanna point out to you is this existing home sales index or existing homes index uh, that just came out uh, about a week ago from the National Association of Realtors. That showed existing home sales falling by 24% in, in September, down for the eighth month in a row. However, prices rose by 8.4%. Now, why does that matter? Why are we talking about one report? I just said, oh, one report, you know, isn't gonna make a thing. Well, if we're seeing home prices decline for eight straight months, if we're seeing a 24% decline year over year in home sales, why are prices rising? I, it speaks to the sticky demand for home prices, or the sticky demand for homes, the fact that people are still going out buying and they're still paying higher prices. Even though now they're paying a 7% handle on their mortgage rates, right? They're paying 7%, 6.5%, sometimes 7.5%, depending on your credit. Well, they're still paying more and higher home prices. That's gonna drive the overall cost of homes up, the overall cost of housing up. Because folks who buy houses, a lot of them then rent them out to other people. And when you pay a higher price when you buy, well, you gotta drive the rent up. So that's something to watch, even though we did see a slowdown in housing costs overall in the CPI. Again, that existing home price higher. Uh, we've just got a big generation of millennials who need a place to live. 
housing was underbuilt for about a decade. There's just not enough places out there. So even though folks don't want to, they're still going out and paying higher prices for a lot of these homes. Much of that going on at the upper end of the spectrum on, on the existing homes, but definitely something to watch out for. So let's get into markets because that's, I think, the big piece of this story, how the markets reacted. And we saw a big outside exuberant rally in stocks. We're looking at the NASDAQ up right now 4.6%. Ooh, that's a big number. Uh, you're seeing the Dow, the S&P both up. The, the Dow is only up 2.2%. So the rally we're seeing the NASDAQ, those high flying risky tech shares, a lot of worry about the, the future for some of those. That has really lagged the Dow for some time. In October, we saw the NASDAQ uh, rise about 4% while the Dow rose almost 14%, had its largest monthly gain since 1976. The NASDAQ only eked out a 4% gain. Well, we are starting to see that reverse and the NASDAQ is up more than double what the Dow is up right now because folks love risk. At this moment when we're seeing inflation kind of turn down and slow down at least, uh, you, you saw it was a rough day yesterday as this FTX and Binance story was hitting crypto, which was hitting other retail and to some extent other institutional investors, folks really selling out of kind of a lot of different things. Well, they are buying back in right now as we see those big numbers, uh, the NASDAQ up big on around 4.5%, S&P 500 up about 3%. Uh, you, it's just really, if you were watching those futures prices, it's just kind of whoop, and then we jumped up after the release of that CPI report. Really across the board, risk assets are going up, uh, and, and those safe havens, folks are moving out of those. If we're looking right now at crypto, this was one of my, my favorite things looking out of the market right after that CPI report came out. Bitcoin jumped 10%, it's up about 9.75% right now. Ethereum up 16%, uh, Litecoin is up 20%. And again, like when we're talking about the rally, when we talk about irrational exuberance, well, this asset class was doomed because of, or some people thought this asset class was doomed, I should say, don't let me, don't let me editorialize it all. Some people thought this asset class was doomed because a fundamental story, FTX, a huge player in the Bitcoin market, was essentially insolvent. You had Sequoia, a firm that invested hundreds of millions of dollars into FTX, write the value of that company down to zero. That shows you that the Bitcoin market, that cryptocurrency in general, is at risk right now. There's a real risk of this market collapsing and crashing on itself. And yet, after a hot CPI print, after one report that shows that, I'm sorry, a cold CPI print, a CPI print that shows inflation cooling down, you're seeing a 10% rally in Bitcoin, 15, 16% rally in Ethereum, 20% rally in Litecoin. I think I'm just telling you right now that what you're seeing is a little, maybe, maybe a little irrational exuberance, as the man Alan Greenspan once said. If you're looking at those bond yields, that was another thing that I caught. Big moves today in the bond market, particularly now. These are, these are supposed to be the calm folks, the folks who are driving the bus, being level-headed. Huge moves. The 10-year note is down 25 basis points in yield. That means that is a huge move. Usually it takes months to get a 25 basis point move in the 10-year note. We had that today in one day. 23 basis points down on the yield of the seven-year note all those back below 4%. Uh, you're seeing the three-year note down 26 basis points. The two-year note, which is most sensitive to expectations for what the Federal Reserve is gonna do, is down 31 basis points today. That is a huge move. The two-year note yield down at about 4.34%. So big moves from the bond market, big expectations for the Fed to do less and to sort of slow its roll. Um, and I think that's something that bears watching. Let's talk about that just a little bit talk about what this report means for the Federal Reserve because we've got to watch the Fed. That's the big thing moving the market. I think folks might be getting a little too excited and not listening to the chairman as they did in June when we got this rally, as they did a little bit earlier in, in, in September when we got the other rally. I don't think folks are really hearing the chairman. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has said clearly, unequivocally, he wants tighter financial conditions. He wants bond yields higher because that makes it more expensive to borrow. It also gives you an impetus to save rather than spend. Look, do I wanna put money in a, a two-year treasury or a one-year treasury or a CD or a savings account that's gonna pay me three or 4% or do I wanna go out and spend seven, eight percent borrowing money for a mortgage? Well, I'm a rational consumer. I wanna save that money. I wanna put that away. These are the highest yields I've seen in a long time. 
As that goes away, that loosens financial conditions and makes it harder for inflation to come down. And that's what the Fed is focused on. So I don't think folks are hearing the chairman right now. He's saying we want tighter financial conditions. He's saying we, we, we want stock prices. We don't want stock prices to click higher. We don't want a big rally in the stock market. We certainly don't want a big rally in the treasury market. And that's what we're seeing today. And the reaction that we've got from markets really could have the opposite effect of what traders think because the Fed chairman has said very clearly, and Nick Timoros, my colleague here uh, at the Wall Street Journal who talks to those folks, who listens very intently, has said, the committee wants tighter financial conditions. They want those bond yields higher, those stock prices lower. And when we have the kind of exuberance we're seeing, that may cause the Fed to react more strongly than they otherwise would. Listen to the Fed, don't fight the Fed. Listen to what the chairman has to say. I don't offer financial advice, but I will tell you, when the Fed chair Jerome Powell talks, you need to listen. All right, so listen, that's gonna really wrap it up here for us on Market Takes. I wanna talk about what we've got coming up out of the gate for the rest of this week, some other reports to watch because CPI is by no means the end all be all. Tomorrow, we get the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. Central bankers will be looking for signs that inflation is becoming entrenched or not, inflation expectations. What are folks thinking about for the next year, the next three years, but those five to 10 year inflation expectations? If those start to rise too far above the Fed, where the Fed wants them to be, they want them anchored around 2%, you could see some more hawkish talk, some more talk about more rate hikes, some more talk about keeping rates high and really crushing the market. So watch out for that tomorrow. The University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index, that's out. Uh, as well as on Tuesday, we get PPI, the producer price index. That's what, it, that's what businesses are paying for the products they've seen. And we know businesses are passing those costs on to consumers and then some. They are raising their prices by more than the increase in prices that they're seeing. So watch out for that report on Tuesday. And then next Wednesday, I think the biggest report that we are going to see between now and the end of next week is that Wednesday retail sales report. We will be right here doing it live for you on Market Takes, breaking down what we saw from the retail sales report, the market action, all that. Look, is spending rolling over? That's the big question. And normally we want no, we want the answer to be no. We want to say that folks are still going out spending money, still you know dropping cash and buying those name brand products. Right now, you probably want spending to be rolling over if you're an investor, because that means that inflation is gonna slow, and that means the Fed can kinda take their foot off the brake that they have been stepping on so aggressively for the past couple months. Uh, that's definitely worth watching, and we'll be here at Market Takes watching that. Listen, I know you could've been anywhere in the world, but you were here with me on Market Takes. Thank you so much. That's gonna do it for us. I am Dion Rabowin, reporter at the Wall Street Journal. Join us on Wednesday for Market Takes. We'll see you then. We'll catch you there, hopefully next time.